But um, to go back to um, the first things are the most basic thing for you or for me or for anyone, faith itself. Would you give us a, um, well, the, a Saint little... Well, uh, St. Paul's remark that faith comes by hearing would seem to have something to do with this resonance of the word. The word, the divine word resonating in the human heart is a kind of interface which changes the human heart. Yes. And tunes it in a totally new way. And so the idea of resonance rather than logical connectedness or logical demonstration and a mere sequence of proofs, one following another rigorously. The idea of resonance as simultaneous and total and all involving and demanding everything that we have and in turn feeding us and feeding back to us everything we need. Would you uh, start over again regarding faith and resonance, that faith is all embracing you? I'd love you to develop that a little better and for us. Well, the idea of the visual world, uh, as compared with the world of resonance, yes. the visual world offers evidence of a very different kind that toward which you can feel an inclination of attention, you can have, you can focus your attention on it. We speak of having your conscious visual life focalized on or concentrated upon an object. This gives you a point of view. Now, you can have a point of view about anything you can see, but you cannot have a point of view about something you hear, especially something you overhear. There's a mystery there that uh, we are much more powerfully involved in what we overhear than in what we hear. But in the world of resonance, man somehow or other becomes completely involved. He is not involved in the visual world as much because this offers a means of detachment. You can stand back, you can look at it from different distances, and so on. The world of resonance, it requires a complete involvement and consent on the part of the listener. However, we can switch off. Even to resonance, we can turn off. And many people, of course, have developed this power in the electric age. They are so embellished or so flooded with data, with information, that they tend uh, to protect themselves by switch off, just turning themselves off, yes. going numb, becoming sort of somnambulistic modules. and unaware really of themselves or the world they live in, not relating and so on. But that is only one facet of this business of resonance. Perhaps there are other ones we should keep in mind. But I, I'd like to go to the fact of the faith again, all embracing, you, you kind of be halfway, you, uh, that it envelops you. I was just wondering whether it's possible to have uh, I suppose it's possible to have little faith. The scriptures even mention it. O ye of little faith. Yes. However, it's really, uh, it seems to be directed there to people who have switched off, who just reject the sound and the word. Uh, but uh, the world of, of St. Paul's remark that faith comes by hearing rather than by uh, any uh, visual manifestation suggests how total it is. Somebody has, in fact, it was the old philosophers who pointed out that the world of resonance, acoustic space, is a complete sphere whose center is everywhere and whose margin is nowhere. And in the world of faith, you have that experience of being always at the center, and the center is everywhere, and the margins are nowhere. This is um, the amazing structure about the resonant world of hearing as compared with the visual world with its sharp boundaries, its rigid points of view, its antagonisms, differences, and uh, contrasts and so on. Whereas the world of, of the world of faith with its much greater power to receive and to involve seems to rule out a lot of these pit, uh, petty differences, petty points of view. I'd like to say <clears throat> that Once upon a time, you knocked on the door of the church. You found something in there 
you were a man so rich with the uh, blessings of intellect and uh, and uh, other resources and yet you came up to the door of the church to knock on it and say I want to get inside would you uh, elaborate on that it's not a, it's not a, a sort of um, a story that I'm really accustomed to talking about but um, in my own case why as a student of literature and the arts, I became aware of the enormous role that the church had played in underpinning these great human activities over the centuries. I was aware that the church had always been on the side of art and intellect, and that uh, the effects of the church, therefore, were everywhere for men to see and admire. But the causes remained hidden. And as an approach to the causes, I became curious to know uh, what one had to do. And having, as it were, surveyed the world of conventional, historical, apologetics, argumentation, and so on for many sides, I became aware that if you're really going to test the reality of the church, you had to test it on its own ground. And the church, as a ground demands that uh, we approach it by prayer. And I simply decided to meet that uh, need of prayer as an approach to the church and simply to ask, show me, is it true? Just show me. And the uh, evidence came unexpectedly and from many quarters and uh, unmistakably and I think that um, it might be a rather uh, interesting scientific experiment for any um, non-believer, as they're called, uh, to simply get down on his knees for a few hours every week and demand that he be shown the reality of this unknown thing. And it doesn't depend, as uh, anybody will soon discover, it does not depend upon concepts theories, ideas. It is a thing with a life that is available to all who want to share in that life, but it must be demanded. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. But you have to knock, and you have to knock pretty hard. So that is a beautiful uh, argument in favor of prayer that you've just uh, given us. And when you enter the church, began to be a participant in its riches and its uh, graces, what are the most memorable and most satisfying things that you've got through all these years? Well, I, my, I myself have cannot think of anything catastrophic or uh, traumatic about my own relation to the church. It has been, to me, a steady source of nutrition, a steady source of strength, a steady and unremitting source of simple fundamental nourishment I think of the church as an all nourishing mother and you never you don't need any one kind of nourishment you need many kinds and so my own as I say relation to the church has been a very steady matter of constant appeal for daily nourishment and uh, this is where to me the church uh, is uh, the obvious and uh, irreplaceable fact. And um, I've never had a great deal of concern about the dogmatic problems or about the theological problems. And um, these seem to me to be taken care of quite naturally by the steady flow of nourishment.